Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom. I'm sign Christ Bless. Captain Gideon here and to my right. Officer Kamal. You're watching another 15 minutes with the captain. So the topic today is holding camp is biblical. Because a lot of people, you don't see pastors in the street. You see the Israelites invading the street, teaching in every corner. That's what we were supposed to do, all right? We're going to uh, start with uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8 and verse 1. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. So all the people gathered where? Into the streets at the water gate. Read. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. So what is the book of the law of Moses? The Bible. To bring out the Bible. Back then you had only the Old Test Testament, the Torah and the Tanakh. Read. Verse 2. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding. So both men and women were there. Because a lot of camps teach that, you know, only men can be around when the word's coming out. No, both men and women in front of the whole congregation brought out the word. Read. Upon the first day of the seventh month. And he, that was what? A new moon. Upon the new moon, they gathered in the streets and they taught the people. Read. And he read therein before the street. That before was where? Before the street. Before the street. He was in the street teaching. Read. That was before the water gate from the morning until midday. From the morning till midday, right? So us, we normally do what? Midday to mid-afternoon. But back then, they did what? From the morning till midday. That's holding camp. Because what is time is morning? Roughly 8, or 8 a.m. So 8 to 12, that's like four-hour camp. Right. On the average, that's what we do. 12 to 4, 12 to 3, or 11 to 3, or different time bracket. But at the end of the day, we still help hold camp for a number of hours in the streets. Read. Before the men and the women and those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Why do you think you have to teach to those who can understand? Because you want to build others to go do the same. Though this work is too great for one man. So we got to keep teaching those who can understand to go out, to, to, to build themselves up in the spirit and to be able to go out and do the same thing. That's what Christ did. He came, took 12 taught them, and then when he died, guess what? They went out and teach. And they taught others which did the same. Remember that. Read. Verse 4. And Ezra... No, no, I'm sorry. Read verse 3 again. Verse 3. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate, mm -hmm. from the morning until midday, before the men and the women and those that could understand. So give me... Give me Proverb 120, because it says it, he read before the street, right? We're going to read 20 and 21. Proverb 1, between, verse 20 and 21. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Wisdom crieth without. She utters her voice in the streets. In where? In the streets. The wisdom cried without. She uttered her voice in the street. That's what we just read Nehemiah was doing. He was, I'm going to read it. Stay where you at. Verse 3, and he read therein before the streets. Read therein what? There it, from the Bible. The Bible is the book of wisdom. So wisdom uttered her voice in the street. How does that happen? By the prophets go out in the street and teach. Read. Verse 21, Proverbs. She crieth in this chief place of concourse. The chief place of concord, concourse. It, I'm going to read in, in Nehemiah. Uh, verse 1, and all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate that's a main gate water gate that's where everybody come get water there so you find everybody so this is why when we go teach we find a location where everybody's moving in that location we usually pick like business location because what these people don't respect the sabbath so that's a perfect location to teach 
Because they're always going to be there buying and selling, and we can use the scriptures to show them they're doing wrong. Chief concourse, at the head of the street, teaching the word. That's what our forefathers did. That's what the Bible says our, our, our forefathers did, and that's what we're doing. Read on. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying. So in the opening of the gates in the city, we go to many cities in the chief concourse, in the gates, and we uttering our voice, reading what the Bible says. Go back to Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 4. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. So they stood up on the pulpit made of wood. Some can't do it, some can't don't. But you see it. At the end of the day, are we in the street? Yes. Read. And beside him stood Mattathiah and Shema. So Ezra stand, and beside him is who? Mattathiah. Mattathiah next to him. And Shema. Next to him. And Aniah. Next to him. And Uriah. On the side. And Hilkiah. On the back. And Messiah. In the back. On his right hand. Or people on his right hand, people on his left hand, right? Doing camp, what do you see? What do you see? You see a teacher, a reader, two front posts. That means you got people on the right, people on the left. Read on. And on his left hand, Padiah, and Mishael, and Melchiah, mm -hmm. and Hashem, mm -hmm. and Hasbarana, and Zechariah, and Mushalam. So that's camp formation. That's what you see us doing in the street. So you thought we were doing our own thing. No, what we do is biblical. We don't establish our own righteousness. We do things according to the Bible because the Bible says, be ye therefore perfect. So we want to be perfect and walk with the Lord. Therefore, how things are done, how our forefathers do it, because the scriptures say in Romans 15 says, whatsoever was written aforetime was written for your learning. That to our patience and comfort of the scriptures, you might have hope. So we're reading what was done before. So as prophets of the Lord, what are we supposed to do? We enact the same things our forefathers did. We hold camp just like our forefather Nehemiah and Ezra did with all the other brothers standing post. And everybody took turn. I forgot what the scripture is. There's a scripture that says, and everybody took turn to bring out the, uh, the, the, the prophecy. I forgot where that is. But it shows you the same way we do. Brothers get an hour. Some brothers get 30. It doesn't matter, but we take turn of bringing out the word. Read. Verse 5. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. Mm -hmm. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. So that was the head teacher. So Ezra was above the people, and he's teaching the word. He's the head hunter. Read. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So at that time, everybody accepted the word. But we know nowadays, bro, <laughs> war, camp is war. A lot of heathens, a lot of non-believers who claim. It's the most amazing thing at camp. Usually, the dude you see approaching the camp with the encyclopedia-sized Bible, straight demon. Huge Bible, and once you start digging into him, you find out the brother don't believe not a word you see in the Bible. Those are the men that's living a life of false pretense. They want to make people see that, yeah, I got a big Bible, but once you start cutting them up out that whole same Bible, they don't believe it. They start asking, well, who wrote the Bible? Why are you asking that question? You got the biggest Bible. Amazing. Verse 7. Also Jeshua and Benai and Sherebiah and Jamin. And Akub, and Shabbatai, and Hodijah, and Masasiah, and Kalida, and Azariah, and Josabad, and Hanan, and Peliah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. So, what that's saying right there, these are a list of teachers. Right? Because who's going to cause the people to understand the word? The teachers. So, you're going to have a reader. Right? Ezra started first. He was the head hunter. He's, he taught first. And after that, all these brothers took turn. All of them cannot teach at the same time. There will be chaos. Nobody would understand anything. So they took turn. Okay, next teacher up. That one come up and continue expounding, expounding. Because you, one part, well, you know, sometimes we do it. But to do it eight hours, five hours teaching just you, it takes a toll on the body. So because we have many teachers, teachers take turns in teaching the people and give them the sense that's what we do 
All right, read. Verse 8, so they read in the book of, in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. You see that? They read in the book of the law distinctly and caused them to understand the reading. Give me Luke 14, 23. That's what we do. You never understood this scripture probably. You read it and you never understood what it was. Because here's the thing. Many people in the Christian church, they may not understand the Bible, but I know they read the Bible. But they don't understand it because why? They don't have somebody to give them the sense. Before you give me that, give me Acts 8, um, Acts 8.31 to show you something. You, when you read the Bible, this is the spirit I hope every one of you should have in you. Acts 8.31. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 31. Mm -hmm. And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? You see that? This uh, eunuch had enough sense when uh, uh, Luke approached him and said, hey, listen, man, do you understand what you're reading? He said, no, how, how could I, except a man should guide me? That's the spirit all of us should have. Understand that we don't understand this Bible, and we need the prophets of the Most High God to read distinctively in the book and give us the sense. Okay, was that it? Nope. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. He desired what? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. He desired Philip to come and speak with him. Give me uh, Matthew 10, I mean 13, verse 10. So Philip, not Luke, Philip went and taught him and, and sat with him and taught him. But if he never acknowledged that he doesn't know and desired for Philip to teach him, how would he ever get understanding? So humility come before what? Before you grow in the spirit. Read. Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So this Bible, the understanding of the Bible is not given to everybody. That's what you need to understand. That's what you need to comprehend. So you need somebody to teach it to you. And guess what? That's why we go in the street and teach the Bible. Because many people will never walk into a church. Ever. That's why the Lord was command, the Lord commanded us to go out in the highways and the byways and teach. Give me Luke 14, 23. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. See that? Go on the on a, it says, and the Lord said unto the servant, Go out in the highways and the hedge. Go in the highways and the byways, the head of the street, and compel them to come. Compel them to pull by force. That's us teaching you and strongly convincing you with authority when we teach in the Bible to come to the Lord. Because if you don't do this, you're not, you're not going to come in. And many of you, you don't respect us because, why? Wow, we're not wearing suit and tie. Give me on uh, Matthews chapter 11, verse 8. Did Christ wear a, a, a shirt and tie when he walked the earth? Absolutely not. You see how messed up our people are? They say they're following Christ. But we in the street wearing our garments just like our forefathers did, and they don't respect us. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, and verse 8. But what went ye out for to see? Mm -hmm. A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. You see that, people? When you come in the street, what did you come to see? A man wears soft raiment? That's John the Baptist. Was he wearing soft raiment? No. He had uh, a girdle and camel skin. Rough. Looking nice because those today those are very expensive material. But the point is, we were wearing our garments. You still will see us in the street with gar uh, girdles. Some brothers wear leather. leather. Some, some brothers wear pleather. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we wear cloth. You see what I'm saying? Leather is expensive. Camel hair is expensive. So you think John the Baptist looked like a bum, but au contraire, mon frere. Go try to buy some camel hair now. You'll see. Uh, give me Mark uh, 2, verse 13. Mark chapter 2, verse 13. The book of Mark, chapter 2 and verse 13. And he went forth again by the seaside, mm -hmm. and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. Uh, where was Christ teaching? By the seaside. By the seaside. Now, we were a seafaring people, and we were a lot, we fished a lot. I'm from Haiti, and guess what? Where where uh, people fish, there's always an abundant amount of people there. 
That's a marketplace. You see what I'm saying? So he went there and taught the people. We always go where there's a lot of people to teach. We don't hide in the building. We After we teach, we come to the school and do what we do. Keep the Sabbath and, and, and build some more. But we do what the Bible says to do, which is what? Go out in the street and teach. Give me uh, Mark 1, uh, sorry, Mark 10, verse 1. Mark 10, verse 1. The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 1. And he arose from thence, and cometh into the coast of Judea by the farther side of Jordan. And the people resort unto him again. And he, and as he was wont, he taught them again. You see that? He rose up, went to it on the Jordan, and he taught the people again. Christ was always teaching. He was always in the street. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 15. Revelation chapter 1 verse 15. The book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, mm -hmm. as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many That's the part waters. I wanted. Christ taught by the sea. Hop on a boat and taught the people. His voice had to be loud. And this is why you see in the street, we teach very loud. Like Isaiah 58 and 1 say, cry aloud, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. So we, teach, we speak like that because that's how the Most High taught us to teach. So you're not going to find us teaching no other way, no other places but in the street and very loud. With that, we say shalom. Most High and Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth